About six months ago, I set up this old aquaponics system to test an anoxic filter. I added in a heap of white clouds and a reclusive yabby called Neville Longbottom. So let's take a look at the system, test the water and talk about whether or not it's been a success. G'day, my name is Kev. The aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, please subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. So up in the top section of this pond, I have two BCBs or biosinosis baskets. If you wanna learn about how these are supposed to work and how I built these ones, check out the video that I'll link down in the description. Essentially, these BCBs are what's filtering the water and creating the anoxic conditions. This is how it looked six months ago when I set it up, and this is how it looks now. The string or hair algae has been really annoying up in this top filter box, but the water inside the pond itself is nice and clear. I've been feeding at least once a day and I haven't done a single water change on the pond in the six months. Three months ago when I tested the water, the nitrates were creeping upwards. Today they are almost non-existent and that was the aim of the filter. Now it could be that the algae is eating up the nitrate, although technically it prefers ammonia than nitrite, <laughs> but I think that's a whole topic for another day. Either way, the algae has become part of this pond's filtration system at the moment. I have been manually removing the algae and adding some diatomics to try and get diatomes rather than the string algae. And it has slowed the growth, but it hasn't eliminated it as yet. And I do have a heap of impatients planted in the old aquaponic pipes. These were planted into little baskets with kitty litter. Um, so they're sort of mini BCBs in themselves. So in the six months, the system has done what it's supposed to do. It's been processing ammonia produced by the fish and all the food that I've been adding without doing a water change. I mean, the only thing I do to this pond is feed the fish and remove that algae up in the top filter. So do I like it better than a bog filter? No, I don't. I think a bog filter gives me the best of both worlds and it looks nicer. What do I mean by the best of both worlds? Well, as most fish keepers know, we want to encourage beneficial bacteria in our filters. We're taught that the bacteria converts the ammonia into nitrite, then nitrate. To remove the nitrate, we can use plants or do water changes. We also know that the bacteria require oxygen to perform this task. And somewhere along the lines, we decided the more water we can move through all the bacteria, the better. But then we lost out on the anoxic bacterias, which can complete the nitrogen cycle without plants or water changes. Hence the recent fascination with anoxic filters. But this is my theory on what happens in a well-designed bog filter. The water that is coming into the bog is rich in oxygen. So down in the bottom section of the filter, we would assume we have aerobic bacterias doing their thing, taking in ammonia and converting it eventually into nitrates. But as those bacteria consume oxygen, it is depleting as it moves up through the filter. At some point, it most likely becomes anoxic, which means very low in oxygen. So now we also get the benefits of the anoxic bacteria. Now it also stands to reason that it's possible that as the oxygen is further depleted, we get some anaerobic zones. But that should be occurring much closer to the surface, and once the water is exposed to the air, it's going to become reoxygenated. This is also why we tend to have the water splashing back into the pond to help the water mix with the air. So when I think about it, this is exactly how a natural body of water would be. We would expect to find aerobic zones, anoxic zones, and anaerobic zones. 
So that's what I believe the bog filters are achieving, a more well-rounded filter imitating nature. And we still have the plants as an added backup to help consume excess nitrogen. So that's what I personally think is happening. <laughs> I could be dead wrong. But either way, I don't care. Bog filters work for me and they work really well. And so I'm gonna stick with them. I get great results every time. And if you wanna see how I've built some of my bog filters on the cheap, uh, you can check out a playlist I'll put down in the description. I hope this has been a helpful video. If it has, thump that thumbs up button and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.